savior Don't wanna be strangers Let me feel like you know what to do Leave your limitations Live and go against them Just let go and start up something new Cause I know, I know, I know What you planned out Everything that you built up Isn't what you want And I know, I know, I know The life you're living Isn't that fulfilling Let me help you out Good morning, guys. It's 5.28 a.m. on a Saturday. So all that means is we're going to go fishing. The reef's fully exposed, but that doesn't matter. We're going to get on the edge of that reef line and try target Herring and Taylor. The way we're going to do that today is we're going to use a 2,500 size reel with 4-pound braid and a 20-gram Helco Twisty. As the day goes on, it's going to get windier and windier very quickly. By about 8 o'clock today, it's meant to be blowing up to 20 knots and then it's gonna blow out the whole weekend. I've got up early to try target the good weather before the wind kicks in. We're gonna take full advantage of this little weather gap. Would have been quite easy to do nothing this weekend, but I owe you guys an episode. It's been a while. There's been a lot happened since I last spoke to you, and I'm gonna fill you in later the salvo. We're gonna catch a few fish this morning, that's the plan. And then the salvo, we're gonna get out of the wind, go for a bit of a full drive, and we're gonna spin a bit of a yarn, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm up to in life, have I got some exciting stuff planned for this channel? Yes, I have. Totally amped, let's go do this. The reason I'm so pumped is because life's been so bloody good to me over the last few months. Well, nearly slipped in the drink. It's just amazing how much can change in the space of six months. The start of this year was not a great one, but I tell you what, the back end of 2023, I don't think I'm ever gonna forget it. I can't wait to sit down a bit later, have a cook up and talk to you guys about it. But how good's this? Like, this is meant to be the worst weekend of weather. And I've gotten up early, just walk around, have a look at some of these little tide pools. They're pretty cool. And how's this? Look at this morning. I'll put the drone up when the sun gets up a little bit more. Oh, had a hit already. That's a good start. That's a very good start. Here we go again. Won't be long. Maybe when that sun gets up, they'll just be a little bit more fired. No worries. There we go. Can we keep our first fish on? I don't think it's a herring. I have no idea what this is. What have we got here? There we go, what have we got? Oh no, they're herring. I'll bring him up on the dry reef. And hopefully we have a chance of landing him. Woo! Stop jumping into me. There we go. Get him over here where it's dry. That's the first one. I actually might keep a few of these. These are the fish you have to come catch with them. They're in plague proportions, they're good fun. They do get off the hook a little bit, but they're just all around good sports and they taste all right and we've lost him. Come here. No. Ah. Fish on. Woo. Fish on at the ledge. So with herring, they have very soft mouths, which makes them very hard to land. So right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tighten it with this wave. Oh, actually, I'll get him up on the dry now and grab him before this wave comes. Oh no, I dropped him. Oh no! Uh, there he is! <laughs> got him! Ah, I got him! <laughs> oh, I thought we lost him. No, nah, there's the second one. We've almost got enough to eat. If there's ever a reason you should bring a catch bag out in the reef, this is the reason. So you don't have to have fish pockets. Oops, <laughs> they're not going to be very nice after today. So guys, I haven't finished yet, but there we go. We've got two on the board already. Herring are a great fish to eat. They contain so many fish oils and, and a high content of good fats and omega-3. 
and they're also bloody good for your dogs to eat. So I want to catch a few more because my husky Jake, he absolutely loves them. But I just thought while I was here, I'd show you why they're so hard to get sometimes. Well, they're so hard to keep on the hook. And I'm just going to pick this camera up and show you. So when you hook a herring right, look at this, look at this herring's mouth. See how it's got that big hole in it? That's from the treble. They have the softest mouths imaginable. So you either got to fish a really light drag or make sure when you get them in, you lift them straight up. But it doesn't take much for that to tear. Look at that. My finger just tore that then. So soft plastics are actually a great way to catch herring. The lighter the weight of the lure, the less of a chance the herring has of throwing the lure, even though they still will. I do get asked why I go the gold twisty. I go the gold twisty just because when the water's not the clearest, it just has a bit more of a silhouette. Other than that, it's just my personal preference. No, I hooked the reef. Come on, come off. Ah. Oh. So I've got my rod sitting in the rock like this. I've got my braid all out. We're gonna tie a quick FG knot. Uh, sun's out, might as well get the guns out. Oh, took my whole shirt off. No one wants to see that. Here we go. So we need some leader. What are we doing? This is why I tie an FG knot. So I put the line in my teeth like so. I get my leader. We cross it over the line. 22 times. And then we just lock it off with three half hitches. When the knot's tied, it should look like that. I don't know if you can see it that clearly because it's so small. That's what the knot should look like. And then all we do is trim off the tag ends. Then I'm not going to show you right now, but you're always tested by pulling on it. And because it's an FG knot, what happens is that braid binds into the mono. So you've got to pull it tight to make it bind in properly, and then it's all secured and locked and ready to go. Oh, yeah! That was definitely a herring. <laughs> that hit hard. Did that just swim into a reef? Yep, <laughs> might not be a herring, it's a fish. What's going on here? Oh yeah, I got a herring. Looks like we hooked this one well. So the best of it is just get them straight up. Oh. There we go. <laughs> and I nearly lost him as well. well I'm lucky it's a pretty low tide, otherwise we would have lost a few more. There we go. There's another beautiful herring. That one's probably for Jake, I reckon. Believe it or not, I think we exceeded expectations this morning. Getting these three herring on such a low tide, it was hard work. We dropped a few fish. That's just the way herring fishing goes. But I'm glad I got up. Right now it's about six o'clock in the morning and that wind's definitely starting to kick in. I might quickly go home and get the drone so I can fly it over this coastline. You can see how beautiful it is. I literally live 100 metres away from this beach. That's the beauty of it. I've got up first thing in the morning. So I'll leave you with these aerial clips because I would have just got the drone. Have a look how stunning our foreshore is. And I'll catch you later this afternoon when we're in the Forby and we're going up dunes and we're finding somewhere out of the wind to have a cook up. And let's debrief on the last few weeks. So much has happened. I went fishing with Isaac Heaney. I was part of the TFI. I met the most amazing person ever, and that person's going to be on this channel. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's do it, guys.
Well, I've got Jake with me. You can't see Vaughn in frame right now, but he's to my left. Going for a bit of a drive along the beach. We're trying to find an area that's out of the wind to set up and have a bit of a feed, have a drink and spin a bit of a yarn. That's proving extremely challenging right now because we've got these 50K winds. However, we will find somewhere. But while we're waiting for that, have a look at some of these clips. These are some of the leftover clips that didn't make the TFI film. This is when we're out in the boat with Heaney. He was just such a good bloke to be around. Honestly, best bloke you've ever met. We were so lucky to fish with him. I'll leave you with some of these clips, check it out. And by the time these clips are finished, we will be somewhere about to have a feed. And he's got his first hook up of day three. Oh he's fucking holy crap. That thing's huge. That's massive. Going try your luck. Test me in again. We let it rain. Please don't start us up. Got that black and white. They hang in game. Mr. Officer. Please don't search us. We don't got a thing. Tell her park it up. Then that ass be poking up. Them jeans up and sparking up. Like the fireworks. I keep the flame. Heard you barking up. That's the wrong tree. I got the strings. Yeah, I'm charging up. They can't keep up. Got them looking drained. Now they walking up. We found the only nook we could out of the wind, hard up against this bush. Here we are, we've got a little camp set up just for a few hours. Got Jake down here, he's just chilling. He's a good boy. Vaughn's come along with me to enjoy the sunset. And as you can see, the water looks delightful out there right now. So guys, this is Vaughn. Vaughn was a huge part of our TFI experience. He went out of his way and bought this amazing GoPro of a mic and we actually used that for the TFI. He let us borrow it. Without him, we would have been screwed. Thanks heaps, mate. Appreciate no worries, it. Mate. Anytime. It's time for a bloody beer. It's been a good day. I just can't wait for what the next month has to bring, hey? But before we get into any of that, we'll cut up a bit of sashimi. I forgot the herring from this morning, so I'll probably keep them for Mulloway bait feed a few to Jake, he bloody loves them. And yeah, I reckon we'll cut up some sashimi for the sunset. It's gonna be a beautiful arvo. You don't let the wind get you down. Cause if you live in a place like Geraldton and you worry about the wind, you will never do anything. You just gotta get out there and do something. That's so true. Cheers to that. And just quietly, how good of a bloke was Isaac Heaney? He dropped everything in a drop of a hat to fly over straight after a bruising qualifying final that they lost. He jumped straight on the plane, 6,000 k's across the country, flew another interconnecting flight up to us in Karatha, walked in the 40 degree heat, didn't complain, just absolutely frothed it. He loved the fishing. We had plenty of good nights at the bars up there. It was just an amazing experience. It was probably the best part of the whole experience. Or yeah, arguably, yeah. Like we were so lucky, like don't get me wrong, the um, going watching the films over East was phenomenal. But we had so much fun as a team. There was such good chemistry. I don't know if we produced the best film, but I tell you what, I don't think there was a team out there that had more fun than we did. So, big surprise. I've got the Spanish mackerel out. I'm about to sashimi it. And Jake's come to say hi. Don't know why, hey. Seriously, this dog, Jake. He's become a bit of a fish snob. He used to eat Taylor all the time. These days, no, nah, he's after the good stuff. Spanish mackerel are a great fish to sashimi. They're very, they're a very sustainable fish to eat too because they grow so quickly. So we're going to get into this. I brought my side cut knives from AOS. They've copped a hammering over the last few weeks up north, but we're going to use this to slice it up finally, and we're going to have some sashimi. I can't bloody wait. It's like my favourite way to eat fish right now. Gentle. So the key to good sashimi is as fine as you can. You just want flakes of Spanish mackerel. And these knives are super sharp, so it makes it so much easier. And it looks like we're gonna get a bit of Jake's fluff with it too. Well, life doesn't get much better than this. Here we have some pristine Spanish mackerel. Now, a lot of people always go to me, why do you love Spanish mackerel so much? And I love it just because I love the white flesh. I love the texture. It tastes like butter when you eat it fresh like this, like sashimi, just raw. And a lot of people get put off Spanish mackerel because what they'll do is they'll catch the mackerel, put it on the deck of their boat, and they don't dispose of it properly. If you want a mackerel to look like this, be nice white flesh like your coral trout, 
you need to cut the bloodlines at the pec fins and you need the brain spike to get that flesh nice, supple and soft. And it makes a huge difference to when you eat it like this. If you don't bleed it properly, I guarantee you, you're eating pink and red meat with bloodlines all through it. You waste half the fish. A Jake hair, not great, but let's try a bit. So this was caught a month ago and I forgot a dish for the soy. So we've got this little bottle cap and we're gonna smear a bit of wasabi on it. Don't be scared to put a bit of wasabi on it. That is bloody delicious. Let's try another bit. It's got such a good texture. Then we're gonna smash some wasabi. Whoa, far out. That wasabi has a bit of kick. Lucky you got a beer to wash it down. And we'll see what Jake thinks. What do you reckon? We'll go no soy, no wasabi for you. Should we put wasabi on it, Jake? <laughs> go on. Nah. <laughs> nah, you'll Should be fine. we? Nah. Harris PCA will be calling up. Gentle. There you go, beautiful. Is that good? That was good. So, why I got you here, guys, I've got something amazing happening for this channel in the next month. I met this incredible person while I was over in the Sunshine Coast. Actually competed against her in the comp. We have a lot of similarities, we love doing the same things, and we thought, hey, why not, let's go out and have a few missions together. So the idea is, I'm going to go to Cairns. This is Erin, she's an absolute gun, as you're about to see in these few clips. She really knows her way in the water and what she's doing. She's going to teach me so much, like, beyond my own beliefs, because I'm a, I don't dive more than 3 metres, this girl apparently can dive up to 35 metres. She can dive up to 35 metres, she's got an incredible breath hold, and she said she's going to teach me how to spear blue water. This whole comp we were just part of, it was her first time ever doing top water. And she did very well for the first time. So I'm going to teach her how to top water, she's going to teach me how to dive, she's going to teach me why the east coast is best, and I'm going to teach her why the west coast is the best. And like, to be honest, the only thing I've got that's better than her is my boat. Like, seriously, my 3.8 meter dinghy shits over an 8 meter center console. But you'll get to see that soon. What have you done to your nose, mate? Well guys, we're just chilling out right here. Just having the one beer tonight, taking it easy. Trying to lay off the beers for a while. It's been a big month with TFI. Having plenty of beers with the boys, Haney, Lockie, Jarvis. They were just the best blokes in the world. Jake's just having a snooze. I've gorged myself on that sashimi. Vaughn's chilling out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And like I said, what I've got coming up over the next two months is insane. So I'm going to Cairns, Aaron's coming to the west coast, hopefully we can make a ton of episodes if the weather goes our way and we should provide you some very exciting new stuff that you haven't seen before. This is going to be so enjoyable, I appreciate all the love, thanks to everyone that voted for us throughout the whole TFI, I really appreciate it. Well guys, till next time, you have a good one.